All right, hello and welcome to the Titanic Monarch Zone. Now, I'll be a little honest, I am having to uh, wait until it displays the level names before I say them out loud because they all kind of blend together a little bit now. Now, I'm pretty sure that uh, these are their new stages and these are their premier new creations. And uh, they have... Oh... <laughs> The stupid side bumpers from the Sonic 3 and Knuckles extra special game where you are in a vending machine and you bounce up and down and you get power-ups. Sometimes. Sometimes you just get disappointed. But anyway, the, the zones, like the last, the, the big small zone, they're kind of getting a little empty, I guess. Like, yeah, you run through them, but... There's not, there's not so much there. Now, you can run through them. Well, you can't even really run through them fast. Sonic's just like, why have things gone wrong? And they're just kind of there. And honestly, that reminds me of, like, the sand zone from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. The ice zone, which... Despite having the coolest music in the game, potentially any game ever, it used to be my <laughs> alarm tone for quite some time. That is quite the song to wake up to. But then, you just get a bunch of zones that like, yeah, I get that they had a theme, sort of, but then you just kind of go through them. And then that's kind of it. And so in a sense, what, what is up with the giant red polygon ball? It, it just keeps showing up. It's like, hey, notice me. But it's like, why? Why should I notice you? But anyway, like, the developers, like, they kind of captured the spirit of Sonic 3 and Knuckles. But maybe a bit too well. I mean, for as much as I may complain about Sonic 2 stages not being able to, like, zip fast through them, like, you do start having stages like the Lava Underground Zone. And, like, you might not like that stage, but you darn well remember it, because it haunts your dreams. That's pretty much, like, the stage when it's like, hey, Sonic 2 is not actually going to be as easy as you think. Like, you start off, you're, like, jumping on a bridge, you're like, okay, this is pretty all right. You're probably fresh out of, maybe not Green Hill Zone, maybe some sort of Casino Zone, but, like, things have not gotten so bad yet. But then you get to that stage, and Sonic 2 is just, it sits you down... And it, it just has a serious conversation with you. It's like, if you're going to keep on playing this game, and I know you will, because Sonic is the best game ever. Of course, obviously Sonic 2 would think Sonic 2 is the best game ever. It's, it's a slightly biased source. Anyway, it just sets you down, and it's like, if you're going to keep on playing me, there are going to be some ground rules. One, there will be obstacles. Lots of obstacles. This is not a game about going fast. This is a game where one has the potential to go fast, but only if one earns it. None of the uh, easy bumpers shenanigans from Green Hill Zone. Nope, this is a grown-up game for grown-up hedgehogs. If you're gonna go fast, you're gonna have to earn it. And then, well, forever after, the game just changes. And then you get to the Eggman final boss, and you're just like, Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! And then he gets you down to zero rings, because, let's face it, every boss ever does. And then you're just, like, hanging on to dear life. You're just like, oh my god, will I beat him? Will I beat him? When does it end? How many hits? And then finally you beat him. And then Sonic 2 was like, have fun with this ending screen. You earned it. And then you can take pride in yourself for having beaten Sonic 2. Whereas Sonic 3, it's kind of like, oh boy, here's another zone. Here's another zone. Here's another zone. Here's another zone. Just kidding, it's the final zone zone. And then you beat it, and then it's like, okay, this was great. And Sonic 2, it didn't even have a save feature. So, like, you, you had to, like, actually beat all the stages in one go. And, like, that's, that's not an easy feat. Dare I say it, that's not even a human feat. And so, and the, but then you get to Sonic 3, and it's like, it has the save feature. Now, I love the save feature. I'm not going to complain about the save feature, but I feel like it does cheapen the experience a little. Now, I'm not sure how you could do it otherwise. Because, like, 
each level is actually incredibly approachable if you just take them one by one. It's only when you take them as some sort of weird sonic gauntlet that things become far more daunting. Ooh, I found an extra life. And uh, as we just saw, I may need all the lives I can get. Okay, I'm going to amend my opinion on the Sonic 3 levels. It's not that each one is boring. It's that the levels gameplay-wise are boring. Now, let's contrast this with something like Shovel... Oh, so the, so the red thing actually kills you. Sorry, I was too busy going fast for me to even notice. But if you play something like Shovel Knight, like each level has its own specific gameplay element. And it like kind of beats you over the head with that element, but it also makes sure like... Oh, this could be bad. Okay, good. It knows and makes sure that you have mastered that element in order to get to the end. But then you play something like Sonic and like... Yeah, they have gimmicks maybe, but they don't like really make you grapple with them. Not in a way that like a serious platformer would. However, that's not to say that the levels are without merit or anything. No, where Sonic really excels is that each level has its own aesthetic. Like, take look at this level. Just look at the background. Like, if this is some crazy future techno city. You could make a game with that as a setting. Like, this is an entire setting. This isn't just like a level. This is something you would write like fan fiction about. It's like, what kind of people live here? What kind of life would you have to like live in this crazy weird future zone? And yet, Sega, they didn't like turn this into a uh, like, adventure game set in this weird like future mechanical metropolis dystopia they were just like yeah let's make a sonic game out of it and then i mean bless their hearts it's not bad but it's like there's just so much wasted potential like you could you could set an rpg in this sort of world and i feel like it would be pretty sweet but then like making a sonic era platformer it's like i mean it's nice I guess, but like, it, it just it just feels like you're wasting it because like you don't have any g gameplay mechanics really. There are these stupid like orbs, but like I, I mean, it's it's not that much different than jumping around like normal. And then you think about like the battery flying battery zone, like it, it's kind of a pain in the ass to actually play because everything's on a cycle, you have to wait all the time, there are no open spaces so you can't even get the sonic speed, but my god is the aesthetic like really, really cool. Oh, I, I see, that's where I'm supposed to go. Like, it's this like flying airship and like not only is it sort of steampunk, it is literally steampunk. You are literally on a steam machine flying in the air, flying over this Mobius or whatever Sonic's world is called. And like that, that aspect of it is just really, really cool. But then you actually play it and it's just like gimmicks like, oh, there's magnets, I guess, and they move metal stuff. And you, anyway, it's a platforming game. You'll love it. And like, that that's the kind of stuff where it's like, really, really? Like, you, you play, like, Fantasy Star, and that, that game has, like, an awesome sci-fi world. But, like, it's not like this world is necessarily all that different than, like, the Fantasy Star world. It's like, Sega, if they wanted to, they could just, like, make smart games and make smart game decisions. And they could make, like, really cool games. But I feel like the nature of Sega is to just make, like, really weird decisions. Like, if you think about it, Fantasy Star Online... That was a really weird decision. Like, it's this action RPG, but you play with other people. Not only that, but that is almost the entire draw of the game, playing online with other people. And like, it's not like playing online with other people is cheap either. They made you buy a hunter's license. Forgot about that. I, I, recently, I sort of like looked into a playing Fantasy Star Online again, and so you can play on the, all these private servers. And the private servers, uh, somewhat counterintuitively, are free. <laughs> invincibility. So, uh, pro tip, you can abuse invincibility to get through that. But anyway, I was taking a look at this. You got, like, Epinea, I, I think is the recommended one. But there are all these free Fantasy Star Online private servers. But then, uh... 
But then, uh, back in the day, like, it was not free. It was furthest thing from free. In fact, I actually played Fantasy Star Online on the original Xbox. And so not only did you have to buy Xbox Live Gold, which was in and of itself like, I don't know, 70 bucks a year or some crazy nonsense, because again, this was the very beginning of playing online. This isn't like sweet online now, like you could play the Switch online for like 20 bucks. Of course, I'm pretty sure it'll feel like playing online for 20 bucks. But anyway, not only did you have to pay the 70 bucks for Xbox Live Gold, you also had to pay an additional King's Ransom for the Hunter's License. Now, to be fair, I think that was only something like 20 bucks a month or probably 20 bucks a year, just some reasonable, you know, sure, reasonable number. And like, you put all that together and you're like, that doesn't sound like a good idea at all. Why is Sega doing this? But then you actually play it and it's, it's just this magical world. Like, you can describe it in words and someone's gonna be like, okay, yeah, whatever. But if you show it to them, they're just instantly going to be charmed. Like, there's just something magical about Fantasy Star Online. It's like, why? Who would make this? And yet, once they made it, then the question becomes, why has no one ever made this before? And I feel like that's the genius of Sega. They they don't they don't make good decisions. They don't make they don't even usually make bad. I feel like that's the thing about Sega. They don't make like uniformly good decisions, but some of the decisions they make in the retrospect just turn out to be so cool that they 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 just like change the world, I guess. And it, it sounds silly to say that, but just some of the things Sega did are pretty cool. Like the Dreamcast, like, you, yeah, that's a nice touch. You, you start playing the original Xbox and you gotta realize at some point, like, that's basically a Dreamcast 2. Now they obviously can't write it on it, but like, come on, when your system gets a Panzer Dragoon Orta Saga sequel, it's like, yeah, okay, that's probably a Dreamcast. And then you get like a whole bunch of uh, racing games, but again, that was back in the day when uh, arcade racing games were still a fairly legitimate um, genre of game. And so you even have like a bunch of racing games on it, and it's like, my god, Dreamcast DNA through and through. And I mean, the Dreamcast didn't live, but the Xbox did. And so I suppose in a way the Dreamcast lives on in the form of the Xbox. Oh, and, and like, why is Fantasy Star Online kind of relevant? Well, if you look at one of the hottest games around today, Fantasy, uh, Monster Hunter, like, it takes, like, so much from Fantasy Star Online. Like, so much of the things that Fantasy Star Online, like, pioneered, and that, like, if you think about, don't really make any sense. Like, it's instant four-person parties, and then you go and fight, and then, like, the host is sort of weirdly in control of everything. Like, they, they set up the quest if you're doing a quest and everyone can individually join. Like, even though you all decided to do, like, some sort of lobby together, like, it's not like one person is automatically in charge. You still have, like, some degree of free reign. And it's just, like, weird des design decisions that, like, Monster Hunter uh, took and also used are just these things that, like, Fantasy Star Online just pioneered and at the time it was like baffling but to monster hunter it's like it's just it's just obvious and i mean that's kind of the genius of sonic and sega and all of this like gameplay wise okay fine maybe it's a little boring I, I mean it is fun to dissect the bosses see a boss for the first time and figure out like how could you possibly damage it but then like that's not the real joy of Sonic games. The real joy of Sonic games are just these like crazy aesthetics and the music and just everything that goes along with it. Maybe just not the gameplay. So, uh, speaking of dissecting bosses and um, figuring them out, so there is obviously something I'm missing here because if I'm not mistaken, this boss is essentially impervious to my attacks. 
Well, I guess if we're gonna beat the whole, this game is actually Fantasy Star Online 2 in disguise to death. Um, remember the uh, mines? How there was the robot boss at the end? This guy vaguely reminds me of him. So if I was going to, if I was feeling especially charitable today, which of course, I mean, I do, then I would say that not only are the Sonic Mania makers well-versed with 2D Sonic games, they are also well-versed with an occasional smattering of Sega's history. This, how, how are you supposed to beat this boss? I guess when the balls kind of spin around on the ground, that could be like your cue to attack. And then the reason why you can't like attack multiple times in a row is because they explode in spikes. I guess it kind of strikes me, the thing about Sonic bosses is not so much that they're hard per se, it's just that they're designed to be counterintuitive. Like, you fight this boss, and like, the eye is the weak point. And I mean, if you say that to yourself, you're like, okay, yeah, duh, maybe you can convince yourself that that was how it should have been. But just looking at it, like, it's not very clear what it is you're supposed to do here. I mean, your first instinct is probably to attack the balls. But, like, the balls are invincible, they're just gonna kill you. And so, eventually you attack the eye, but then the next thing is, like, how do you attack the eye? Now, it turns out you just wait for the balls to go down, and I guess once you start thinking along those lines, like, it, it, it kind of makes sense, but just on first instinct, it's like, this boss doesn't make any sense. And I think that's really the difference between this and pretty much any other platforming game. Because, I mean, you fight any sort of Mario boss, and it's like, well, Mario can do one thing, basically. Jump and stomp on stuff. So it's not so much a question of, like, what do I do? It's so much as, how do I deal with this Koopa running in my face? Like, how do I get the particular stomping pattern down? But like a Sonic boss, it's like, sometimes you hit it, sometimes you run away from... Oh yeah, there's a time limit. I forgot about that. But sometimes you're just like hitting stuff, sometimes you're running away from stuff, sometimes you're playing Puyo Puyo against something, like, there's just... It's, anything can happen in a Sonic boss, and very frequently anything does. So it's just like thoroughly baffling. Why, why would Sega design it this way? I don't know. I like... That's kind of a recurring theme with Sega. It's like, why would they do any of these decisions? It's like, I don't know. Why did they make a 3D version of OutRun? I don't know. Why did they release it for, like, PlayStation 2, whatever, but not GameCube? I don't know. Like, Sega is full of these baffling decisions. But that's not to say these decisions are uniformly terrible. Like, if you play that 3D OutRun game, it's like, that is a really cool game. And it's, in a way, a love letter to OutRun and also a modern reimagining of OutRun. I mean, it's many things. Just sensible, I'm not entirely sure that you could say that. So, uh, before you start thinking this boss is controlling gravity, nope, the gimmick is that we're on an elevator. And so, um, just in case you were wondering what would happen if you were to fight a robot in an elevator, well, if the robot suddenly makes the elevator fall, then I suppose you too could pretend like you're an astronaut and that you're in outer space. I realize, of course, this is Act 1, and we won't get to see what the next act is just yet, but... I mean... The final boss has gotta be in space. I've played enough Sonic games to know that every single one of them, the final boss takes place in space. So I'm just... I'm just waiting to get to space. In fact, if you play Sonic & Knuckles, like, the, in the intro screen, the very first thing you see is the giant Death Egg spaceship. And it's like... Gee, I wonder if we're going to space. Ooh, those are some blue gears. That is actually a very pretty color of blue. I don't dislike it. Okay, so those red things are coming from an enemy. Oh! The attack helicopters send out red polygons that encircle you and then eventually hurt you. Like, that. That doesn't really make sense. It doesn't even make sense in Sonic Land. And yet... No, that just doesn't make sense. Oh, c <laughs> So, uh, earlier I thought it was cute when those, uh, little bumpers protected me from running into spikes. But, uh, now... 
Now I guess I should have been more jaded and realized that inevitably they would come back to bite me. Okay, uh, I guess we teleport- oh! Neat! Those are the hard-boiled heavies, as the uh, opening cutscene does not name them as such. <laughs> Who's smarter now, little bumper bobber? <laughs> yeah, you thought I was gonna die. You thought I was trapped. Uh, speaking of trapped and dying, nope, still got the touch. And by the touch, I mean King Siddhas' touch, where everything I touch turns from gold to crap. Actually, now that I take a further look at this, it does feel like this is a repeat. So I am beginning to wonder if it's not so much that every world has their own blue sphere zone, it's that like they're they're on sort of like a rotating they're on sort of like a rotation, and so every now and again you fight a different one. Which kind of makes sense, because uh, it's really hard to beat them on the first time around. And even that second time when I thought I knew the gimmicks, it still got me. That being said, you see that giant red thing in the background moving upwards? That uh, only sort of looks like a spaceship, doesn't it? Okay, never mind. When I said that... Sonic levels now they're gonna become like identity list. Like, this level is getting a very clear sense of identity. It's not an identity I necessarily like. Oh my god, those stupid enemies. It's not an identity I like. And then the boss you fight, it's like, oh, I'm gonna remember that boss. I'm not gonna have fond memories of that boss, but I'm gonna remember him. And it's like, yeah, this, this level is memorable. Not necessarily enjoyable, but they don't all have to be. I think it was just the, the mini zone, like, it didn't really do anything with it. Now, I suspect, perhaps, that I, like, got lost in some places and or just, like, ignored some secrets or something, but, like... Ooh, that's... that's dangerous. But I don't know, it just, it just felt like there was a lot of wasted potential, whereas this stage... Oh no, this, this stage is full of usual Sonic nonsense. What occurs to me, I only have one life. So, uh, I'm glad I'm enjoying the scenery, because I get the distinct impression that I'll be seeing a fair bit of it all over again. Come on, you just attacked me with the power of light. Light! I use that to see. Yeah, it shouldn't be hurtful. To be fair, I thought I would at least make it to the boss first. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay, never mind. I, I didn't see those spikes. I thought they were just merely impeding my progress. But of course, this is Act 1. The bumpers are on your side. At least for now. Yeah, if there's one aspect of this level that I feel like is a bit too much, it's those stupid Jacob's Ladders where there's really no good way to dodge them. Now, the stupid helicopter guys who ens ensconce you in the red polygonal nets and eventually hurt you if you're slow enough, those I actually rather like. But the stupid Jacob's Ladders, I, I could do without those. Actually, yeah, now that I think about it, so this level's gimmick, or at least one of them, is that there are hidden bumpers everywhere. And, like, that's actually really cool, because that means, like, you can gain speed just from random places, just by going fast, or just by walking. And that's really cool, actually. Like, you look at a lot of other places and their gimmicks, they all kind of slow you down, but this stage, it speeds you up. And then there are the side bouncers, which, on one hand, like, they, they kind of facilitate, like, pointless set pieces, but on the other hand, they make you move fast. And so I guess this level is sort of living the dream. It's like Sonic, but he's going fast. Man, I wonder if I should pitch that as a game to, like, Sonic Team sometime. It's like, okay, let's make a Sonic game, but get this, he moves fast. And they'll be like, whoa, revolutionary concept. We've never done that before. Oh no, didn't have enough speed. Level's gimmicks coming to the rescue. Okay. <laughs> oh, earlier on I was talking about memorable parts of the levels. And, uh, my, oh my, 
Is this a memorable part of the level? Yeah, that part too. To a lesser extent, but it's still noticeable extent. <laughs> you can't touch me. You can't touch me. Oh, that timer is still running. Yeah, this, this stage has made it abundantly clear that I can't beat it with one life, so... Let's try again. Okay, maybe Sonic is just trying to give you breather levels in between, like, really tough levels. Or maybe the ratio is one really tough level and then two breather levels. Because I do remember fighting, fighting my way through Oil Ocean Zone. And then... You play, like, Lava Reef Zone, and it's, like, it's it's very chill. And then you play through the big, small level, and... Well, I wouldn't necessarily describe it as chill. At the very least, there's, like, essentially no danger. And then you get to this one, and it's like, Hey, you remember how you had to pour your heart and soul into playing Oil Ocean Zone just to get through it? Well, you're gonna have to do double that to get through this one. And it's like, you know what? Sign me up. Bring it on. I'm ready for some serious Sonic action. Yeah, I guess that's how they can kind of get over the fat. Oh, invincibility. So just watch it disappear. Okay, good. But it's like, if, if that's how they can get over the whole saving, you can just uh, breeze through the game sort of paradox. They just make the levels really hard. And so it's like, even though you do have infinite saves, it's like, you're going to be on that level for a long time. Oh, extra life. <laughs> yeah, no, I uh, intentionally lost all those coins so uh, I could get another life. Yeah, that sounds like a plausible excuse, right? You know, in Oil Ocean Zone, it took about three minutes just to get to the mini boss, but uh, in this zone, it takes about three minutes to get to the dangerous spike section. So uh, if I had to rank the orders and the levels in terms of difficulty, this might be tops. Okay, I guess that's actually realistic physics-wise. If you uh, try to, oh, an extra life. That is not realistic physics-wise. But anyway, I tried to spin off of the uh, falling platform, and it didn't let me. And I will begrudgingly admit that I think that's actually physically accurate, if not platformically inaccurate. I also like how when Sonic goes in one of those little tramways, then it's the shocked falling Sonic look. <laughs> On one hand, it's disappointing to lose so many rings. On the other hand, that is clearly not the most dangerous thing that can happen to me right now. Yeah, I think it does help when Sonic has like moments like this where you just kind of slow down and you have to kind of like work your way through a little puzzle. And like, it's not terribly difficult. If you remember in uh, Hydrocity Zone, then there's that one signature moment in Act 2 when you just kind of stop and then you have to jump onto the spinning uh, platforms where they're like spinning pillars. And like, it's just a nice sort of landmark, a temporal landmark. And you can be like, oh, okay, so I'm about that point in the game. Whereas, like a lot of levels, like Green Hill Zone, like you can fly through that with nary a care. And while that is a distinguishing feature, that does kind of make it a little bit forgettable. And then you get through that mini zone and like, there was never really a landmark moment. It was just kind of like, ooh, I can get small now. This is a gimmick that I will enjoy. And then they never really used it for anything. Uh, looking at the timer, okay. That is the hardest part about this boss. I mean, I'll, I will give a point in the difficulty favor of uh, Oil Ocean Zone. Because, like, that boss, if you were uh, not paying attention, that boss will, like, kill you by flipping into, um, just smashing you into the top of the stage. But this boss, see, he kind of plays it more normal. Oh, sh get out of there. Give me my extra life. I'm going to need all of the ones I can get. All right, I'll be honest. I'm finally critically tired of blue spheres. I think I won't do any of them until 
I beat the game. So I hear that uh, there's a blue spear option test. Like you can play whichever one you want. So I'm assuming that unlocks when you beat the game. And so I just, I'll stop playing the blue spears. I'll just only do that. <laughs> okay, that's a silly thought. It's like you have to run real fast and then just then you can you touch the bumper and then go fast and it's like bumpers are usually free <laughs> it was a turtle it was a turtle the whole time i thought it would at least be a bird or something but on one hand i'm kind of wondering it's like am i still making forward progress on the other hand i'm not exactly sure if it's even possible to backtrack in a sonic game so i guess ultimately that is the most Reassuring thought. Yeah, I remember these. Oh, okay. Made it through this time. Okay, I'm warming up to it. This zone is one of the coolest zones. Oh, crap. Now, am I backtracking? Is it possible to backtrack in a Sonic game? I don't know how I did that. For a second there, I kind of stopped the bumper from coming. Or maybe if you're just at the right mo- no. Well, at least the gear doesn't kill you. Probably the one thing that doesn't. Uh, it was a treasure most die. It wasn't even a shield. I hate that power-up. It's so misleading. It's like, oh, this power-up must be something good. It must be a shield or something. No. It's just the blue thing that goes by your rings. I don't even understand what it does. I suspect that it doesn't do anything. Okay. Oh, come on. No rings? No rings for Sonic? <laughs> they put the rings in the Jacob's ladder. <sighs> I've, I've said it more than a few times. These Sonic Mania developers know exactly how a Sonic player will think, and they use that to exploit them and like make things as hard as possible. And uh, my, do they deliver? So uh, when Shinobi Mania gonna come out? Because that was another beloved Sonic, er, Sega franchise that I feel like needs a modern-day revision so we can all remember how cool it was. Now, I guess you could argue that Ninja Gaiden, uh, the one for the Xbox and then later re-released for the PS4 and all that jazz, that that is kind of all the shinobi you'll ever need. And I suppose that's true to an extent. But it would be nice to play Shinobi Mania and, uh, well, have a new generation see what classic shinobi was like. Oh, <laughs> at first I was thinking, was like, how do I get those power-ups? And then I realized they were both Eggman power-ups. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if there was an Eggman mode in this game where you played as Eggman, and then the Eggman lot would be extra lives, and then the Sonic ones would just be death. That would be kind of funny, actually. Eggman mode and Sonic. I don't think that would ever happen, because fundamentally it's just not a good idea, but... Eh, you never know. Maybe there's a ROM hack or something. Okay, so I've been playing this level for about, I don't know, 6 minutes 30 seconds. 
there has got to be a boss around here somewhere. Well, when the game's being generous to you, you've got to be a little bit suspicious. Okay, let me guess. Hard-boiled heavies, boss rush. Well, we're certainly at a boss. Yeah, I did feel like we kind of blew through the hard-boiled heavies a little too quickly. Oh man, Eggman went full Doc Ock. Which actually kind of makes sense. Y you know, Eggman basically looks like Dr. Octopus. Okay. Again, with the counterintuitive Sonic bosses, so it looks like the Doc Ock legs should hurt you. But nope. What, does he hurt himself? And then, of course, Eggman, this nice, appealing, round target ball. And then you try to attack him, and nope, nothing. Ooh. This, this has shades of Kerp. Well, that's an interesting attack. It's actually kind of cool. So if you get, like, grabbed by him, and you have to do a uh, Wario minigame-esque boss attack. Okay, so Eggman seems to be reacting when I jump. So, uh, we'll show him. We'll beat him without jumping. Now, I kind of wanted to revisit the, um, Wild West uh, hard-boiled heavy. Because, like, I kind of feel like I beat him with essentially no effort. But, uh, I don't want to see him that badly. Oh, but one hard boiled heavy I do not want to see. Oh, it's Shinobi. Oh, they're back. This actually reminds me of Mega Man Zero, when the four guardians kind of come back to, like, hurt Sonic. I mean, Mega Man X Zero. And then you fight, like, they're sort of revised forms. Oh, interesting. It kind of mercy uh, teleports you out if you are unable to defeat them. Uh, you sure you want to do this Eggman? <laughs> oh, so I guess that's a visual representation of your progress as well. Oh, cool. So he lets his guard down uh, when he jumps, too. <laughs> How's that for smarts, Eggman? He's not going to let me get away with this, is he? It's like, you are going to fight the hard-boiled heavies, and you are going to enjoy it. Oh. Well. I know I said I wanted to fight him, but now that I have, I am a little underwhelmed. Bad move, Eggman. Bad move. Uh, good move, Eggman. Good move. Oh, and you got me. Like, I think he's absolutely supposed to. It's the Ladybug Rider, isn't it? Hey, stay away from me! <laughs> Has the Ladybug evolved? That's kind of silly. Ooh, it's hypnotic. Don't stare directly into the Ladybug's eyes. Actually, he was the most helpful. He, like, gave me more rings. Not that I needed them per se, but... It's always nice when people think of you. Oh. Uh, we already visited them all, didn't we? Oh, it's back to repeats. Oh, cool. There are rings, just in case you uh, need more. And, uh... Okay, good. Still got rings. Alright, Eggman, show me that delicious metallic egg body. Well, at least he doesn't kill you in one hit if he lands on you. Like usual. This egg is hard boiled. Ooh, it's not just a regular caution, it's a titanic caution. Oh, hey, back to the story. Remember, Sonic Mania had a story. So, uh, apparently Knuckles climbed his- oh, never mind. So it looks like it was a plot twist. We were in space the whole time! That was the final level! 
with which this cutscene strongly implies. I don't I don't think they're kidding. This this is it. This is the final level. This feels so underwhelming. You know what? I'm not even gonna put finale or, or mention that it's the final level in any way, shape, or form. I'm just gonna put like 10 or whatever number level this is. I'm gonna trick you. I guess that means if, if you were watching this, yeah, you've been tricked. It was the last level, I guess. Uh, wouldn't have thought that, but I guess so. It was the last level. Man, these big credits are usually just like a time to uh, sit back, relax, and kind of contemplate on your whole, whole gameplay. But this, this credits, it's like I'm on edge. I'm like, when's the bonus level? When's the secret level? Like, this can't be the ending. That can't be the final boss. I beat it in one try, for Christ's sakes. That never happened. <sighs> Alright, I'm starting to make peace with the fact that that may in fact have been the final level of the game. And I mean, let's not kid ourselves, it wasn't a short level either, I mean I died three times. There were a lot of people that worked on this game, although that's not necessarily a bad thing. Because, I mean, this game was actually pretty professional. I heard it uh, grew out of a fan, a fan hack, a ROM hack made by fans, but then it was built up into this whole professional game. And I'll give them credit, like, that was a professional game. That was, that was not some sort of weird janky hack, where sometimes Tails turns into Knuckles if you're not paying attention to them. Oh my gosh, speaking of hilarious Sonic ROM hacks. <laughs> have, have you ever played the one where Sonic gets fatter? The, like, they replace the rings with onion rings, and so Sonic gets fatter the more of them you collect. <laughs> and then if you collect enough, Sonic dies of a heart attack. So uh, I guess... That wasn't the final level. This, the credits, is the final level. Actually, these credits are pretty long to not have like some sort of game or other distraction. Like, I mean, you play through Smash Bros, you get to like shoot everybody's name as they come by. You play through Sonic Mania, and uh, you get to see the same three to four screens of sprite work scroll by. I mean, granted, those are some pretty pleasing sprites, but I mean, come on, can't I have like Sonic jump from like piece to piece? I mean, you basically have it programmed in there already. So, uh, I noticed a lot of managers, but, like, it was just one name. There wasn't, like, a team. They didn't list their teams or anything. So I'm kind of wondering, it's like, What's the point of being called a manager if, if you don't even have, like, a team? It's like, can you even really be called a manager at that point? Well, I guess it's better than calling you, like, the vice president of these... Oh, wow. <laughs> this cutscene has gone on so long. My Switch decided to go to sleep. <laughs> well, just in case I needed external validation that these credits were too long. Thanks, Switch. Always got my back. Uh, well, okay, I tried pressing down on the control pad and, you know, maybe to skip it, but, uh, nope. 
No such luck. Oh, now we now we get to see what Sega of Europe is up to. Operations? I, I'm beginning to think none of those people had anything to do with this. Jason Goonery. What a silly name. What's Jason up to? Uh, just the usual Goonery. But then you get like Lola Okupeheo, and it's like, that's probably a very common African name. So it's like, fair enough, fair enough. But Goonery, it's like, I feel like that's a silly name. Online? There's online for this game? Oh, never mind. Websites, so they had to make the website. They're crediting the people who made the website. Like, I, th I think they want to send this message that this was a big old labor of love, but it's like, you've lifted so many names that, like, you've diluted the contributions of any individual person. In fact, the only person who whose name I can mention of this is Christian Whitehead, and that's because it flashes very briefly on the title screen every time I boot up the game. But, like, poor Haran Patel, he'll never get his just desserts. Ithne Metcalf Bliss will forever toil in obscurity. Aiden Bass, well, Aiden Bass is listed under, like, management or something, so I'm pretty sure he's doing just fine. and manual production. Which of those jerks decided it would be hilarious to have a web manual? And which of them decided to have the web manual load as slow as possible? If you want to do built-in manuals, take a look at the PS Vita. So every Vita game has like a manual built in, but it loads from the cart or something because it loads super fast. <laughs> try, try, try again. How about not? <laughs> oh.